What's going on, guys? It's your boy Woodsy, coach of the West Virginia Knockdowns, with my week two match for the Woods. Uh, we are playing my boy Vando this week, who uh, should already have uploaded his perspective of the game, so make sure to check it out in the description and whatever. But uh, looking at his team, he has uh, an absolutely disgusting Fairy Dragon Steel Core up top here, along with a bunch of good pivot bonds and like Centrace and Manectric, and. Uh, yeah, really, like, a lot of, like, low-tier threats and stuff, too. Like, I think Ball Trace is pretty good now with Heavy Duty Boots and Sharpedo. Got some uh, nice coverage moves this gen in close combat and flip turn and stuff. So, uh, a lot of cool stuff going on here. But, uh, getting into the squad here. <laughs> uh, the first thing I noticed after I got done building is that I was, like, on my third grade Pokemon Ruby playthrough shit. Because I only have... <laughs> I pretty much only have attacking moves on all of my mons. The only attacking moves, or non-attacking moves that I ever stealth rock on Nido Queen and Dragon Dance on High Dragon. So, get going to throw back to third grade here. Uh, mostly just because uh, Dancy and Victini are so strong that it's really just, I just need coverage moves because V-Create and Moonblast and stuff are so spammable that I don't really need setup and stuff. Then, of course, I have the two Assault Vest mons and whatever, but... Mega Diancy kind of just like tears through his entire team, just like it does every other team, especially with all the four coverage moves, because uh, Moonblast, of course, is very spammable, where Earth Power is going to be hitting Cinderace, who's one of his resists, Ferrothorn's another resist, who gets, again, blown back by Mystical Fire, and then um, Maltrace is the last one who gets blown back by Diamond Storm, of course, so could really just kind of spam Moonblast and not really even have to worry about anything, because I am just going to be destroying all of his resists afterwards, so... Mega Dancy should be pretty good here. After that, we have uh, Max Attack Adam and Victini. Basically, just click V Create, no brain shit. Also, my uh, my best switch into stuff like his Walls in Ferrothorn and Florgies, which is a big reason why I'm running Culver Berry, so I don't take like 50% from knockoff otherwise or something like that. And then uh, also, really, my only switch into something like a Cinderace, which is another reason I have Culver's, because I think Sucker Punch is really the only coverage move that Cinderace gets for Victini. And, um, yeah, I think V-Create really just hits everything that, and even the stuff that it doesn't, Ball Strike hits pretty hard. So, like, uh, I think Sharpedo is one of his resists. I'm trying to think what else he has. Like, his, yeah, Cinderace, Maltrace, and Sharpedo are his switch-ins, which all pretty much take so much damage from uh, Ball Strike, and I kind of beat... Cinder Ace 1v1, like even though Ball Strike doesn't hit Cinder Ace super effectively, I beat it 1v1 anyway because it can't touch me. Uh, past that, we have Nido Queen with, uh, you know, the Sledge Wave Flamethrower Ice Beam pretty much is his whole team. It's my Rocker. It is also my Electric Resist since he does have stuff like the Mega Manetric and the Magneton that are going to be wanting to spam Volt Switch and whatever. Uh, I think the Citrus Berry was because, like, a Specs Flash Cannon or an Overheat from Mega Manectric. I think both of those do more than 50% the Nido Queen, so I wanted to have the Citrus Berry to uh, get me back in out of range of, like, something like that later in the game. Uh, then when you have Dragon Dance High Dragon, I wanted to run a physical High Dragon set this week because he does have that Florgies. And uh, at plus one with the Life Orb and everything, I could Oko even a physically defensive Florgies with an Iron Tail. Uh, I didn't find out that High Dragon got gunk shot until after the game, otherwise that probably would have been the better option just because it's more accurate, but uh, Iron Tail worked either way too, and then Flamethrower to hit his Ferrothorn, who would be his other Outrage uh, resist, so past that we have Assault Vestimus Magius, who is really just here to buy me a switch in or something like that to a Latios because it eats his um, it pretty well and scares it out with Shadow Ball. Uh, I think other than Miss Magius, the Ancy is really my only other way of dealing with it. Because it does outspeed my entire team, except for Dancy, who it speed ties. And uh, Dancy does most of the time win that 1v1, especially if it's healthy, it guaranteed does. But yeah, past that, Shadow Ball is really spammable against his team, because he doesn't have any resists other than Sharpedo. And then 4Gs could also take hits, but uh, Charge Beam kind of deals with both of those things, because it hits Sharpedo super effectively, of course. And since Sharpedo is so frail, even though it's only 50 base power, it's still going to be doing good damage. And then I could uh, also get some special attack boosts to maybe eventually break through his Florgies with some Shadow Balls and stuff, because uh, Florgies can't really touch my Miss Magius unless it has, like, Toxic or something, because Moonblast is going to be doing zero damage since I'm so bulky. And then, finally, we have Assault Vest Tangrowth, who is mainly here because of Sharpedo. 
but uh, also can be pretty good against like his Magneton or any of his special attackers, really. Maybe just like live a hit from Latios or something, since I'm a little weak to Latios. And then like hit it back with a knockoff. Great coverage against his whole team. I think the only thing that really walls it would be like Florgies. Which uh, even knocking off Florgy's item is something is that could be really helpful for me to free up later game with High Dragon and stuff like that. So, getting into the game here. Uh, I saw the, the mons that he brought and I pretty much decided that Nido Queen kind of just beats almost all of them except for Sharpedo 1v1. So, uh, I had Latios I guess, but I think I led Nido Queen. Yeah, I did. Or no, I let Victini. Oh, that's what it was. I think because Victini beat everything on his team 1v1 except for uh, Sharpedo. So I did just lead it and get a free V crate off. I know that with my defense drop here, he could potentially Oko me with like a Draco Meteor or something. So I didn't want to be staying in here. I get out as he goes into his Ferrothorn, predicting my double into Diancy. But uh, the reason he made this play is because he didn't know that Diancy got Mystical Fire, which is unfortunate for him because it is just going to Oko. Uh, technically, if he was especially defensive, I could have maybe not killed, or if he was like an Aka Berry or something. So it was like a, it was a little bit of a questionable play for me to go for it anyway. But I figured that he was probably going to be clicking like Stealth Rock or Key Wave or something like that, so or knock off even. So I kind of just decided to uh, risk it because I didn't need the antsy all that much. As he goes into Cinderace to revenge kill, I figure that he's probably running the Iron Head if he's going into it to revenge kill, as he does reveal to click Iron Head, which is why I go into my Victini here, and again, I'm just going to be able to fire off a huge V create onto something. Or no, I think I clicked Alt Strike, actually, because uh, his Cinderace was on the field, and, and it was better against Cinderace. I get the Paralysis on Latios, which is actually kind of a big deal, because now I can just outspeed it and click U-Turn. So as he goes into his Magneton, thinking that I might be choice locked in the Bolt Strike, I do just uh, get to Vault or U turn out of there into my Nido Queen, who is also a pretty good threat here because Flamethrower is pretty free. As I do just pick up the KO on Latios there. The crit didn't matter, but I don't know that it, like, because, like, I'm just going to outspeed it and kill it the next turn anyway, but I'm pretty sure, so I don't know how much it really mattered. You go Sharpedo to Revenge Kill as he, uh, Flip turns on my Tangrowth to get Cinderace in, and I think this is where I kind of get caught in the cycle here, because he's just going to be spamming Flip Turn and U-Turn with his Sharpedo Cinderace and just chipping my team down slowly, specifically my Victini, since the Tangrowth is at least getting some Regenerator recovery, but I go into High Dragon this turn thinking that I resist Dual Stab from Sharpedo, and I could probably live a close combat. Oh, and I kind of figured he would protect also because uh, Victini is going to be able to outspeed Sharpedo. So I figured he would protect and I could just go High Dragon for free. Uh, I think because I was scared of the close combat, actually, I went into Tangrowth here. So he goes into Florgies. So I decided to just click a knockoff here and get rid of something's item. So I get rid of Life Orb on his Sharpedo, which uh, I actually kind of wanted him to have Life Orb. So he would keep chipping himself down with the damage, but... Predicting that he was just going to flip turn and go into Cinderace, I stay in and click a rock slot and do 53%. And knowing that I was like pretty physically bulky, that I knew I was going to be able to live a pyro ball, especially because I don't think he had max attack or anything. I don't think he was max attack, so I decide to just stay in and click rock slot, thinking I'm going to kill this thing and be able to get enough uh, health back with the generator to continue to check his Sharpedo. But unfortunately, I do get the mineral. So I am not going to get the kill on Cinderace. I think the one before that might have been a match roll, though, so it kind of evens out. I go into Miss Magius pretty much just as a sack at this point, because I don't really think I need Miss Magius since uh, Latios is dead. But I do get to resist. And like that's, I stayed in on the Sharpedo thinking that he was going to try to make a prediction or something like that, since I didn't really need Miss Magius anyway. So I was kind of okay with him just clicking Crunch or anything like that. As I click Charging, I don't get the... Uh, the special attack booster i probably would have stayed in and kept trying to get special attack boosts but instead i just go into nido queen as he toxics which works out pretty well for me i could just fire off a sludge wave now and he reveals to be kebia berry because uh, again he was expecting that gunk shot on high dragon that i wasn't running because <laughs> i was just silly and kind of missed it but works out for him because he could uh, get the wish off into magneton who i'm not particularly scared of because i just destroy it with a flamethrower as he reveals to be steel beam which was a cool little tech there and because i am max hp i'm able to eat it up if i was offensive i think i probably would have died to that so but since i am running the max hp we could eat it up and get another kill with nido queen and flamethrower 
He goes into his Sharpedo now. I'm just going to... I don't have to make predictions at this point. I'm just going to keep going into my wall and Pangrove. And I am going to be able to knock this thing out with a Giga Drain now. Because uh, I would have been able to kill the Cinderace anyway, since it's a 1 HP. Um, don't really have a, a switch into the Cinderace, so I'm just going to give him my Tangrowth here. On the, uh, the Pyro Ball, and be able to go to my Victini, who could live 1. Uh, he is in blaze range, so it does a ridiculous amount of damage. You see, it does 40 damage. So if I missed my Zen Headbutt or something like that, it could have been pretty bad. But Zen Headbutt was... Uh, it's like 99% accuracy with the victory star, so I was kind of just going off the fact that I hit the 99%, and then as he goes forward, geez, I could just kill it with the create at the percent it was on. So, good game to Vando here. Uh, I felt like my, uh, my matchup was pretty good here. As you can see, it ended up going pretty well for me. So, uh, with that, we will see you in week three.